vessel has no obvious markings. It's got a white superstructure and a red hull, but has no name, no identifying features whatsoever. When we found the vessel, it appeared to cut away its fishing line and has changed course and increased speed. Currently, we are in hot pursuit of this vessel. Fishermen don't usually wear balaclavas, and they don't usually throw stones. Here it comes. Here it comes. But this is the Antarctic. Here, most of the fishing is illegal. Most of the fishermen are pirates. And the most prized fish of all is the Patagonian toothfish. The story of the toothfish is a microcosm for what is happening in fisheries today. There's an oversupply of fishing vessels. They're larger, they're hunting deeper and deeper waters. And there are more boats hunting fish than can sustainably be caught. As a result, we're starting to run out of fish. A decade ago, hardly any toothfish were caught in Antarctic waters. Today, more than 100,000 tons is taken every year. There's your fillet form of your Patagonian toothfish. I mean, nice fillet, it's a thick fillet, has a very, very good flavour, and you've got to realise, especially when you're talking about your, your pirates going out and taking it, they can stay out there for six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and just haul up tonnage of this fish and freeze it on board the vessel, and brings a very high price on the on the Japanese market or any other export market that they may have. Toothfish are deep water creatures found in waters that are hardly ever patrolled. They're easy to catch and they fetch a high price. They can grow to two meters in length and weigh up to a hundred kilos. And that's why they're so popular with pirates. And it's the pirates that are driving this species to commercial extinction. It's a species that is disappearing before we've even got to know it. Like most Antarctic fish, researchers know little about its habitat or behavior. They think it lives 20 to 40 years, and they think it swims at a kilometer or more beneath the icy waters. The fact is, the toothfish is still a mystery to science. This year, Australian researchers went on the first and only survey mission to look for toothfish, and they sent in the cameras. These are the first images ever taken of waters too cold and too deep to dive, more than a kilometre below. Now there's a, there's a toothfish. Oh yes. Just swimming along. The impression you get is that, is that, he's, that they're ambush predators, that they feed on the crabs, they feed on these uh, prawns and squid and, and, and small fish that are, that are drifting along. I want to uh, basically do a camera run, so down the slope here, okay? Tony Kozlo led so the four-week mission. But even this was not enough to really uh, understand the, the toothfish. Yeah. It would be a bit like trying to, to survey a population on a mountain by flying over in a helicopter and, and uh, you know, dangling a camera or dangling other instruments and trying to estimate what the size of bird populations are, say. So it's, 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 it's exceptionally difficult. When you know so little about a fish, it's quite easy to hunt it to commercial extinction, isn't it? It, it is. Um, and in fact, that's, you know, it has happened in, in many 
many fisheries in many parts of the world. Um, and it's, it, it is a major danger with deep water fisheries because many of the deep water fish aggregate on specific features such as uh, particular seamounts. And so the fishermen obviously know, get to know where these, these features are and they can very, you know, they can keep fishing these, these aggregations down to basically to the point where the, the aggregations just virtually disappear. It's a common theme. Today, major fishing areas around the world are in collapse. The amount of fish caught every year has been falling from the peaks reached a decade or so ago. Researchers now think that within a generation, most fishing grounds will become commercially extinct. As stocks have declined, fishing fleets have headed for the last frontier, Antarctica. They've targeted the toothfish, hunting it with such industrial precision that stocks are likely to collapse in three years. This is an example of a typical fishing ground that shows how hotspots of fish might be distributed. And here is a hotspot here in red, and as you move to blue, that's um, the lowest densities, and then the darker blue is uh, no fish. And so you typically see the trawlers uh, or any fishing vessels will concentrate on the hotspots. What can happen is that if they concentrate on these aggregations, the fish will move from the less uh, desirable grounds into these areas where it's a much better place to be. And so you can actually see a reduction in the uh, range of the fish, even though the catches in these areas uh, remain relatively constant. The catches look okay until it's way too late and then the catches suddenly decline. To prevent this, quotas are set for the toothfish. They're based on catch information from fishing fleets as well as survey missions. Andrew? Yes, Tim? I've just emailed you that data from the last cruise. Oh, great, thanks. Andrew Constable helps set the quotas for CAMELAHA, the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. Made up of 23 nations, it seeks to control Antarctic fisheries so they won't collapse. The annual CAMELAHA quota is 28,000 tonnes, the amount of toothfish that can be taken without destroying populations. But pirates are not members of Camelot, and they don't follow the quotas. There's a great difference, a vast difference, between the amount of toothfish which has been traded and that which has been um, calculated to be sustainable. The tonnage that we think is being taken out is in the order of 100,000 tonnes uh, per annum. And it may be more than that. However, the illegal fishing must make a mockery of quotas that you try to set, which is supposed to be sustainable. They certainly make a mockery of the quotas, but what they do do is the, uh, making the assessments that we do and spending the uh, time on the assessments is that it means it's out of the scientific realm. The problem is political, not scientific. It requires resolve to chase pirates in the Antarctic. And it needs a ban on the trade of fish caught illegally, a measure now being discussed by Kamala countries. The question is where are the fishing fleets going to go next? And, and, there, and you know, I think many fishery scientists are, are quite concerned. The feeling is generally that we're running, they're running out of new, new places to go. So, um, I mean, that's going to be, the, I think, probably a, a major problem, major crisis in this next decade.